Well, howdy, 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 nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys and girls, and welcome to this. Another brand new day. Yes, indeed, a brand new day. It is Monday morning, and in my hand, I have a hamster. Now, I can't let her run around on my arm like I usually do because, well, of that mosquito bite. Well, I'll, I'll show you in a moment here. I gotta figure out how to, how to do this on my other hand so that it feels semi-natural. There, she's a sweetie. She was digging around in her cage, and I love showing off my hamsters because I love hamsters. I think they're absolute sweethearts. They're the best rodents in the entire world. And so I'm gonna put her back in her cage now because she's a sweetheart, and she was digging and looking for food. So here we go. And I like to scatter their food when I feed them because they are burrowing and, and foraging creatures. And so I scatter it so that they can go digging and looking for their food. And so definitely a thumbs up. Now, I'm not wearing my bracelet this morning, in case you haven't noticed that. Where did I put it off to the side? Here we are. It's, it's a good bracelet. It's really nice. I like it, but oh my God, you see those bites? I have to use shade because the bulb up here washes everything out. I mean, I need light, so you gotta have lighting. I mean, I don't have proper YouTube lighting as people should have, but I, I use a big LED bulb up there and it's bright, but oh boy, that has been the worst I have ever had a bite in a very, very long time, decades I would say. It is a huge bite. Yesterday, I had a massive reaction to it. It was hugely swollen, bright red, all day in a huge area. I have stayed away from it as best I can. As best I can. I have put lotion on them. I have put vinegar on them. I have put ice on them. It has been horrific. The worst I have ever had. I mean, right now, I want to attack that and just scratch it like crazy. But I can't, of course, because if I do, it's just going to itch worse and it's going to swell up and get red and I may go septic. I need to have a testosterone shot. I haven't had one probably in a year and some. And when I don't have testosterone shots, my immune system starts to bottom out. So I need to get that checked on. I don't have the money for it. Yay. But, I mean, it was bad. It was bad. I put vinegar soaked it into tissue and taped it onto there in the hopes that that would help. But like I said, I put lotion on there. It has been bad. Coupled with, everybody has weird little things that go on in their bodies. Some people have massively terrible issues. I am friends with on Facebook and Twitter and I follow his channel. There's this one fellow who's got horrible scoliosis issues and because of his back issues and some, you know, he's coming up on 20 years old and he's not even five foot. So sometimes bad things happen. It's, it happens. I'm lucky. The bad things that have happened with me structurally as I was growing up, I mean, I've got scoliosis, but it's minor. My rib cage doesn't open up the way it's supposed to because everything smushes and does things wrong so this part of my rib cage does not expand the way it should on top of that one thing that happens that's i noticed this as a kid and now it's getting worse and you know or, or the same but when i was a kid i could get touched here somewhere on my face and i could feel weird tingly stuff in my arm or you could do stuff to my arm, you know, just minor touch, and I could feel weird stuff on my face. So I've got a weird misconnection in my wiring as it was growing when I was young. There's some sort of misfiring. That also gets bad, like, I'm usually okay, like, you've seen me before, I have the hamsters run across the top of my arm. That's dangerous too with this arm because I get feedback loops with the nerves in this arm. 
in that if you know something crawls on your arm over here like this little prickly claws the claws go into your skin and you feel oh that's kind of icky but then you know it's so quick and it's not doing a great amount of damage and your body is excellent at filtering out stuff that's just not important so it, it's like oh it kind of hurts and then it doesn't anymore because the little claws are digging in and you know your body has now said oh not really a threat when I do that on this arm unfortunately what will happen whether it's just a simple touch like if I'm bumping up against a wire like this that goes bunk 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 against the back of my arm or a hamster scrabbling with claws or just any sort of touch anything can set this off or a little like if it's hamster claws it'll be like the little claws dig in but then there's a sparking feeling that sends out little bursts of electricity from where the claws point in but that little burst of electricity the rest of my skin around that really hates the feeling and so it pulls back a bit from that sensation which means there's a larger area for the spark to spark and so it sparks out bigger which means it retracts around it even more so as the little guy is crawling or that little cables like these are just going bimp 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 up against my arm each time that sparking gets a little bit worse so everything else withdraws and if I don't do something to interrupt that it will reach a feedback loop point where from the tip of my fingers all the way up to my shoulder it feels like the entirety of my arm is being sparked with electricity like that and it's just it's not really electricity it's just a terrible feeling but it's just feedbacking and getting worse and worse and what I have to do is there's a theory in well a hypothesis in medicine where it's gating I do not know because I'm not in healthcare anymore and so I don't read up on this stuff a ton I don't know if they've figured out further information on it but from the last thing I had heard with gating is the idea is and we're not quite sure why the mechanism works but if you have a feedback loop like say you're ha suffering from addiction and you're caught up in the addiction symptoms or you've got a feedback loop in your arm where the, the nervous system is going nuts and it just feels terrible. Some form of issue where it's bad, but and you need to somehow break that. You need to use what's called gating. Now in some cases it can be extreme, like they actually use this in the TV show House, like what, a decade ago now? Where he was suffering from addiction problems, and while the, the science, you know, not wonderful, it's TV, Big, to get away from that they showed him breaking his fingers and what that does is it puts in a gate where these symptoms these signals gate off the other ones because they're big enough they interrupt and they gate so if you're suffering from addiction stuff that you can't get around and you break your fingers you're going to be concentrating on this you're still going to be suffering from the other stuff, but you've broken the loop. It's not grinding you down. Yeah, you're dealing with broken fingers now. So that's why it's, you know, a little bit extreme there. But it's the same idea. When I've got that sparking going on, I have to scratch or rub or do something. Something to send through a sensation that's stronger and blocks that. So once it hits that threshold of gating, then I can concentrate on, oh, that's good, that's good, and then the sparking goes away because it's blocked. It's being blocked by the other signals going through. They're not really blocked, but it works with your body so that it can ignore that to concentrate on the other thing. And so that works. Don't break your fingers unless you really really have to but it's just gating works and to read up on it it's it's good stuff but that's why I don't have my bracelet on because oh like last night I mean it's not that it feels bad or rough because last night when I was reaching into my pocket or doing anything at all cloth or such would scrape over the top of that and boy, it feels good to scratch.
Oh my God, it feels good to scratch. Oh my God, does it feel good to scratch. It feels wonderful. Right now I am in agony <laughs> because I want to scratch that. Now, my body is also good at ignoring things like that. Great periods of time yesterday, I would feel zero bits of itching because my body, and everybody's body does this too. It's not just me. I'm not a mutant or anything. I'm just saying there's, you know, the one things that our bodies are good at is if you can ignore it, then your body can ignore it too. Like if, if you get involved with playing a game and you've got that huge itch, let's say, you know, you're playing, say, Bloodborne, just as an example. If you get into it, you'll forget that that itches. It may even, like happened to me yesterday for like a good three, four hours at one good point, it didn't itch at all. It was a danger because, of course, all I had to do was scratch it once accidentally by you know, brushing up against like my pant leg and it went, oh God, that feels good. And it was like, oh no. And then it, it was the slow descent into, ah. So I don't like mosquitoes, but as stated, you know, I keep my window open for the ventilation and I can't put a screen over the window because the cat needs to come in and out. So the window is wide open. When the fan isn't running, like when I'm recording, you know, they can fly right through the fan or this far off to the side of it where it's just open, nothing, so the cat can get in and out. So every morning when I come in, there's crane flies and moths and little mosquitoes and tiny things and then you see the occasional spider come down on a dangling web down here while I'm talking and I have spiders that are I don't they're not in the corners right now I don't see any spiders in the corners anymore I got massive cobwebs with dead bugs in them in that one corner next to the window I need to clear that out but I don't I haven't seen any spiders here since the last couple days when I was plucking you know little baby spiders off of everything and then putting them into the hamster cages I, I i keep referring back to the old mad max movie with tina turner in it where it's like you know i put the spider into the hamster cage and it's welcome to the thunderdome it's like you're gonna fight it out here they usually don't fight it out i mean the hamsters aren't even gonna notice a little tiny spider and so all it's doing is just having to crawl out of the hamster cage and then oh big whoopsie all i did was inconvenience it for a time but that's okay i mean i don't like killing things but one of my big things about death is i'm i'm a human being so i'm never fully good with anything all the time. I mean, you can be like 100% saying, I am okay with death today. I understand I'm going to die. I am, I am okay with my mortality. I understand it. It's okay. And the next day, you may be stricken with existential terror over the thought of your own death. And then the next day, you're like okay with it again. We're human beings. We're contradictory. We're messes. So, the actual abstract idea of death doesn't bother me too much. I mean, I don't like the idea. I don't want to die. I'd like to like continue until I choose to turn myself off, but no choice given. What I don't like is, and this is the part that really is what worries me. I understand that there's a great period of choice, a great chance you know, one third that I'm just one day going to go to sleep, not wake up. A lot of people do that. I mean, I can't tell you how many people we found in the nursing homes where we put people to bed. And then the next morning, we call the coroner to come and get the body. It happens. That unpleasant, but okay. It's the feeling it coming on, realizing what's happening having the terror of knowing that I've got seconds left, coupled with the pain of dying, that is what I don't like. 
I mean, I want to be of a proper state of mind so I can properly comprehend what is happening because proper comprehension can lower the terror. That's the part I don't like. Knowing that there's only seconds left and that it hurts. That's what I don't like about the idea of dying. Because otherwise, I mean, no choice. No, no, no choice. We're all going to kick off. We're all going to rot. You know, it's going to happen to each and every one of us. So, thumbs up for that. And I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab. I'm going to go through and thank 20 to 25 people for having left me a comment. I'm not reading the comments right now. I'm going to read them afterward. For right now, I'm just thanking you for having left a comment. Good comment, bad comment, and different comment. Thank you for having done so. I'm not reading them right now. I'm going to read them afterward. Thumbs up each one I do and answer as many as I can. For right now, as stated, just thank you for having left a comment. If I mispronounce the username, no disrespect is intended. I'm an American English speaker. We're just not good at that. And of course, it's a range of 20 to 25 because even though I count in America, American Sign Language on the fingers of this hand with my fibro, depression, insomnia. I am so tired all the time. Have you ever seen the bags underneath my eyes? Yeah, it's exhaustion. A pain related insomnia. Thumbs up. <coughs> anyway, though, hauling up my chrome. Kara Lemon Grab. Thumbs up and thank you so much. And Serenity7, greatly appreciated. <coughs> Ugh. Zamal, greatly appreciated. John Johnny, thumbs up and thank you. Heim's, oh, Heimdall's daughter, thank you very, very much. And Davidson de Cavallo Arcano, I know I'm nowhere close, but thank you very much. Fish Dicks, 95, thumbs up and thank you. I like the name. Harv72B, thumbs up and thank you. And Plop, greatly appreciated. And thumbs up, Esperanto is an excellent, excellent language. Esperanto estas mi lingvo. Russian timing, greatly appreciated. And I, I, don't know where the invite went to. I haven't gotten it from anything. So, thumbs up. But Pandora NYC1, thank you so very, very much. Kathy Kitskat, greatly appreciated. And I've been phasing the phrase out. That's why I've been treating it like an electrical system going bad. And JNP, thumbs up and thank you. Some guy named Jamie, <laughs> thumbs up and thank you. Marilee Cachero, roaches suck so bad. A Lemon Pie 407, greatly appreciated. Joshua Steiger, I sure hope that's close, thank you. Lazio Johnny 79, thumbs up. And Adam Weaver, greatly appreciated. And we have Adrian Bryant, thumbs up and thank you. CX News, well, greatly appreciated. And J O S D F L L R E S, huh, oh, thumbs up and thank you. And am I okay? I sound sad? I always sound sad. I'm badly depressed. And then we have Steve99, thumbs up and thank you. Alejandro Solis, greatly appreciated. And last but not least, we have Mus Las Bruder. Whatever that, that, it's a language. I don't know what it means though. So thank you very much, each and every one of you, to get me out of my head, into the world, dealing with real people. It is a good thing. It really is. I mean, we need people. Even if it's just as an abstract concept. And hey, if you can check out my various links, I have Twitter, Facebook, GoFundMe, Patreon.com, NearlySeniorCitizen.com. If you could donate to my GoFundMe campaign or become a Patreon.com patron like one of these beautiful and awesome people, that would be beautiful and awesome. But if you cannot donate or you simply do not donate, I take all good wishes and I deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest. So thank you very much. If you can toss me a like, <coughs> excuse me. I do appreciate all the positive validation I get from my existence. Definitely a thumbs up. And of course, if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be very awesome. Greatly appreciated. I would understand if you did not wish to. I mean, there are so many people that, that just can't get past some portions of what they see. But if you are down with it, I will do my very best to keep you entertained from now until the literal end of time. Billions of trillennia from now. That's a long time. That's actually longer than I'm going to live. I, I'd like to live that long, but realistically, I think I've got about, if I take care of myself, probably a good 20 years left. But my stepfather, who was in World War II in the Navy, he's 88 years old, still clocking away, clocking away, ticking away. So you never can tell. Hey, hey, what do you say? Thumbs up for that. Well, shucks. I've got this video, in case you didn't notice, got another video to edit and render, another one to record, edit and render. Tomorrow I have my appointment to get my eyes checked, and then it's off to choose glasses from Zenny Optical, which I won't be able to afford until next month. But it's nice that I'm gonna be able to frickin' see. Oh, 
You take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, my friend, and that is a very good thing. I like to keep these at 20 minutes, really close and approximate to that. Take care.